And today, I'm going to be showing you how to make Melodic House like Ben Boomer. As usual, you can get the project files, samples, MIDI, presets, all that kind of stuff in this video in the description. And if you're patient on my Patreon, check there because it will be all available there shortly. And yeah, let's get started. So, this is the loop you heard in the intro. We're at 122 BPM, and the first sound we have here is the ARP, which sounds like this. <laughs> Basically what's going on here, I'll show you the MIDI first, it's just playing this sort of like A minor arpeggio and you can see we're kind of like just going up. I guess it would technically be starting on F, but it really sounds like A minor to me, like this feels a lot more minor than it does major, and if it was major, it would be F major because of where, yeah you can see the, the first chord there is F major, but basically, yeah, so this is an A minor, even though it starts on F. Um. And what's happening here is we have a polyrhythm. So what's happening is we have basically this pattern. And then what's happening is you can see that ends right here, like on this little like half note in between the second and the third bar. And then what I've done, I'll do it again here to show you, is I've just duplicated this over a whole bunch of times. So now we just have it repeating there. And the reason why this is a polyrhythm is because basically if you listen to like the chord progression for example. You can hear that's really happening over a matter of bars. It's like one bar, second bar, third bar. And you know it's like the, the chords change each time. With this arp however you can hear, like I said, it's restarting at this point instead of restarting on like each bar. So basically you know, poly means multiple things. You just have multiple rhythms going on in the track because of this. So yeah, it's kind of a cool way to make a more interesting kind of ARP. And I know Ben Boomer does this a lot as well in his tracks. So for the sound on this one, I made it using analog. And what we have here is we have a saw wave and a square wave. You can see the square wave. We've got the pulse width up a little bit and, and the LFO on the pulse width as well. So that's just kind of moving that pulse width constantly, you know, keeps it more interesting, gives it some, like, kind of uh, switching up. And yeah, and then I have those an octave apart. You can see I've got the second one detuned a little bit. And then those are going into this low pass filter. And with the low pass filter, you can see it's just a simple kind of pluck like you would hear in like a melodic house track. But there's one there's one key thing here. So we have the envelope on the filter. We also have this key tracking on it. What the key tracking does is basically it means the lower you play, the more closed the filter is going to be. And the higher you play, the more open the filter is going to be. And so this is really cool when you have an arp like this where it's like going from low to high. Because it makes those high notes kind of put some emphasis on them. Versus if we turn that off. It's still cool, but it doesn't have that like... Kind of like opening vibe like that. So yeah, after that, just have the amp envelope set like this. And then the last thing we have inside of analog here is just a bit of vibrato and a bit of unison to kind of give it a more like chorus the sort of sound. After that, we have a bit of echo. You can see I've just got this on dotted eighth notes. And a bit of reverb to give it some space. Pretty standard stuff, just some delay and some reverb. Pretty much what you would put on most arps, especially in this style. Um, and then after that, I have a saturator and a drum bus. And so these two are just kind of fattening it up a little. I'll show you. Here's like with nothing. Sounds kind of thin and like weak. When we add these, it really helps to kind of fatten it up and, you know, just take it away from sounding like just a clean, dry synth. After that, we just have a compressor side chaining it to the kick and an EQ8 cutting out the low end as well as doing a little bit of a high end boost just to kind of give it a bit more crispness. And that is it for the ARP. The next sound that we have here is the string, which sounds like this. So what's going on here is we have this string just kind of playing over top of the chord progression. You can hear it just bounces between the A and the C, and uh, these are just octaves. Pretty simple stuff, but this really adds a lot of kind of like ear candy musically. Like if you listen to this with it, it 
versus without it. You know, it's really bringing it to life. So yeah, and then the way that I made the sound on this one is basically I took this string sample. I'll show it to you real quick. Really simple, just sort of like a long string sample. And you can see I brought it in here and I've looped it. And the trick I've used with the looping is I've got this fade on. So by default, it should look like this. And if you turn on the fade, nothing happens. But if you take the length and the start time and kind of tweak them a little, you can see now when we turn up that fade, it actually does something. So the reason for this is because you can hear if we just let it loop. I'll play a high note. You can kind of hear it clicking at the end. And so, this is the purpose of the fade. I'll just turn that start time up again. And now, it loops endlessly. So yeah, that's how I did that. After that, we just have a little bit of reverb. And then I have the Haas effect here. And the way this is working is basically the Haas effect is where you take the left and right ear of your sound, or the left and right signal, I should say, um, and split them. And then you push one of them ever so slightly forward. And it makes it a lot wider and a lot more stereo sounding. So here's without it. And then with it, you can hear the difference there. So what I've got here is I have an audio effect track, and we have a right chain and a left chain. And it doesn't matter which one you put it on, but on the left chain, I have this simple delay. And with this, I'm just delaying the signal forward. Like, we have these linked. I've got the left and right ear linked. I've got the time on 10 milliseconds. Anywhere between, like, 10 and 50 milliseconds is good. I've got no feedback, and then we have the dry wet all the way up. And that's, like I said, it's just pushing it forward 10 milliseconds. So now we have the right ear happening at the time that you are playing it. And then the left ear happening 10 milliseconds after. And because of this, we get this really wide stereo image. So yeah, after that, I have a bit of saturator just kind of fending it up and a bit of compression side chaining it to the kick. And then the last thing we have here is just an EQ8 cutting out the line. And that is it for the string. So the next thing we have here are the chords, which sounds like this. So this is the chord progression. It's just going F, G, C, A minor and then back down to G. And then what I've done is I've taken these kind of like, these triads here, just three note chords, and I just put the middle notes, the thirds up an octave. It just kind of splits the chord out and makes it a bit deeper sounding because you're kind of getting like more of the keyboard, if that makes any sense. Um, and yeah, and then for the sound on this one, it's really small, like you can hear, it's just this little tiny thing. It's really subtle, but you can hear if I turn it off, it feels kind of empty. And the thing is, if we turn off this filter, it's like, it's too much, you know? It's just too much in there. So this just kind of cleans it up and dials it back a little bit. So yeah, what we've got here is we just have a square wave, pretty simple stuff. Going into a bandpass filter, I got no envelope on that. And then I just have a little bit of vibrato and a little bit of unison as well to kind of give it a bit more uh, texture at the end of the sound. After that, we have a bit of chorus to kind of give it some like, some width and kind of make it a bit more soft sounding and more smooth. Um, and then we just have a compressor side chaining it to the kick and an EQ8 cutting out the line. And like I said, this is a really simple layer. It's just kind of something in there to kind of fill it out a little bit more. After that, we have the kick, which sounds like this. So it's a pretty standard kind of kick you would hear in these types of tracks. You know, you just want something a bit softer and kind of smoother like this. You wouldn't want like a super hard EDM kick or anything like that. Um, and you can see with this kick, I've got it tuned. So I've got the transpose down and I've also used the detune. And you can see on the tuner here, when it shows up, it's hitting F now. So this is also important. We're in the key of F major. So, you know, you definitely want to tune your kick. But yeah, that's how you do that. It's just using the transpose to get it like to the note and then the detune to sort of fine tune it. After that, I just have a bit of drum bus just kind of fending it up. And then I have this EQ8 just kind of cutting out some of those boxy frequencies and making it a bit deeper. And that's it for the kick. Next thing we have here is the bass, which sounds like this. So with this one, the notes it's playing, it's just following the chord progression. Like I showed you F major, G major, C major, and then A minor, and then back down to G major. Pretty simple stuff there. But then for the sound, I made this one using operator. And what it is, is it's an FM bass. Basically, using FM for like a bass, really allows you to make like a cool sound because you can get this deeper kind of more sine wave-esque sound but it has a little bit more texture to it so what i've got here is just three sine waves here doing some fm pretty simple stuff i've got the second one up an octave and i've also got the fine tune up a little bit on that to kind of give it some like 
warble, and make it not just like, you know, so straight. After that, the only effect I have on there is just a compressor side chaining into the kick, and that is it for the bass. So I have the kick and the bass in a group. You know, I talk about this a lot on here, but basically, if you take these kind of similar elements, like in this case, the kick and the bass, you know, the low end stuff, or in this case, the percussion, and kind of group them together and do group processing to them where you put the same effect on everything, it can really make everything a lot more cohesive and tighter sounding. So that's what we've got here, and I'll show you. Here's with no group processing. And then with it, so it's really making the low end fatter and stronger. So first thing we have here is a drum bus. This is just fending it up a little. Here's without it. And then with it, it just adds a bit more power and kind of strength to the bass and the kick. and helps to kind of glue them together a little bit more. After that, we have this EQ8. Here's without it. And with it, and this is actually equally as important in terms of like gluing these together because this is kind of, you know, cutting out and boosting certain things in the mix that we want. For example, I boosted the high end to kind of bring out the click in the kick. I boosted the mid range to kind of bring out some of that punch as well in the kick and even in the bass a little. Boosted the low end to give it a bit more kind of low end thump. And then we have this cut to just kind of cut out some like muddy stuff. And yeah, this is really like, again, you can hear kind of bringing them closer together because you're putting the same really sharp EQ on both sounds. And by virtue of that, they're going to sound more together. So that is it for the low end bus. The next thing we have here is this little percussion, which sounds like this. Pretty simple stuff, just like a little percussion sound. Kind of add something so it's not just hi-hats and the clap. After that, we have the clap, which sounds like this. Again, pretty simple stuff, just kind of like a pretty hard hitting clap. You can see I've got the saturator on it. There's without that, and then with it. And yeah, also I got that little <laughs> there. So that's another thing. Definitely, you know, just kind of adds a bit more life to the beat, makes it a little bit more interesting because it's not just the clap on the two and the four every time, but it's kind of like something unexpected. After that, we have the hi-hats, which sound like this. So what's going on here is we have this hi-hat just playing on the upbeats, and then we have this one playing 16th notes. And you can see with this one, I've actually got a velocity on here, and I'm randomizing the velocity of it. So this is a technique I've heard in Ben Boomer's music. Whether he's randomizing it or if he's just kind of like drawing in the velocities himself, I've noticed, like, if you listen to this, It's like that kind of thing where the hi-hat, it's constantly changing the velocity throughout the track. And you can hear it brings so much life to the track because it's not just doing the same thing. Like, it's never going to be the same velocity two times in a row. So it's really interesting this way. But yeah, and then I have all that percussion in a group. Like I said, just to kind of tie it all together, I'll show you. Here's with no group processing. And then with it. So you can hear what that's really doing there. So the first thing we have here is the drum bus. You can hear when I turn that off versus when I have it on. It's just fattening everything up. Kind of helps to glue it together a little bit more. Puts that same kind of like gritty texture on everything. And then the other thing we have on here is an EQ8. And this is just cutting out some low end. You can hear when I turn that off. There is a little bit of low end in there. And you can see it as well. So just kind of, you know, cleaning that up and making room. And yeah, that is going to be it for this one, guys. So, I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe and hit that little notification bell. Um, and yeah, make sure to let me know what you think of this video in the comments as well. Once again, you get the project file and samples and MIDI and presets. All that kind of stuff from this video in the description. And if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there because it will be available shortly. Thank you very much, everybody. And I will see you tomorrow with another video.